You might be wondering why he is looking so frustrated he might explode. Well, it all started with this. He was an easily affected man. Some would say a bit of a pussy. He wanted to respond to a comment, but through making an entire video. So he decided to make a piece of furniture combining 3D printing and something else that seems to get everyone excited, pallets. Only to realize that the pallets might actually be toxic. What is methyl bromide? He made this video as a response to one single comment and his plan is to post a snarky reply at the end of this video. And this video is sponsored by Bamboo Lab. You might have or not have seen my video about the stool with wooden threads. If you haven't, this is it and today I plan on making a similar thing, but with a twist. For the top, I'll use pallet wood. I might have an idea that could make pallet wood look really good and for the legs, I'll use some pine dowels. Easy peasy, that's the idea at least. So first things first, design something that would make for an easy project to make. What my videos usually don't show is that designing and 3D printing usually involves a lot of prototyping which means printing one iteration, redesigning parts, printing new iterations, and adjusting until I have something that I think will work. And this project is no different, and the larger the parts, the longer it takes to 3D print and prototype. If there's something wrong with the model, you need to reprint it. But to get past that, I of course make smaller versions, or rather print parts of the entire print to make sure I'm on the correct path. Like this centerpiece with internal threads. This is the first version. Cocky from the start, I just thought I had it. But a couple of issues straight away. The angle of the legs was off, the threads were also bad, so back to the drawing board and changing it. Then I printed a thing to make sure my dowel would sit flush. It turned out that this 33mm dowel needed a 33.4mm hole to fit. Kind of like, uh, mm, no, I shouldn't go there. Then I printed iterations of the threads before I had a good tight fit. I made my own thread file again because it seems easier than doing the coil thing for both internal and external threads as people suggested on my last video. When I found that my threads and angle was set, I printed the entire thing again. This time to realize that when angled, the hole of the dowel that is 33.4 millimeters won't fit the dowel anymore because the more angled, the more squished the hole becomes. So I calculated the angle and found my correct diameter together with ChatGPT. After doing that, I had my final piece printed and it looked good and was ready for use. It's just a lot of prototyping and drawing until I get there. As you can see, there's a lot of waste material before I'm done. Luckily for me though, the days of printing one item that doesn't even print right, those are over. Because for the last two years I've been mainly printing with Bamboo Lab printers and they've been so reliable, so when they reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try this, the A1 combo, I was excited. And yes, they are the sponsor of this video, but what a fortunate thing for me because this thing is great. To be honest, it's already my favorite printer. It just works so well. In my opinion, Bamboo Lab really changed everything around 3D printing. And one of my favorite parts of it is that they've made 3D printing a lot more accessible. I even bought the A1 Mini for my kids and they enjoy it a lot and they just print from the app. And this printer in particular comes in at an entry level price point. And I would say it's comparable to high end printers because it's got the active flow control and also vibration compensation, even at the high speeds it's printing in. Because I wanted this to be part of a furniture, I also bumped up the walls to five and the infill to like 35, 45%. And whilst that was printing, I decided to attack the pallets. And I heard some concerning things about them that I'll get to a bit later. I've seen people use these pallet irons before, so I bought one to try it out. I might also say I've only used pallet wood once before and it wasn't my favorite wood to use. The upside of course is that it's free, but there are a bunch of downsides. 
We will see what I think about it after all the work is done. And I was struggling to get it apart. I don't know how Jisper makes it look so easy. See what I did there? Apparently it's harder than it looks. And the pallet crowbar thingy didn't even fit my pallet. So what was the concerning thing about pallets? Well, I was watching a video and this guy said that they are toxic. So I thought that's no good. But here's also the deal with watching videos on the internet. Because several times now, I've come across people suggesting that different things are dangerous, kind of providing what they think is evidence. And I'm a naturally skeptic guy. I don't believe in much, but when it comes to my own safety, but more importantly, my kids' safety, then I might be a bit more naive. So after watching that video, I went on a mission to really find out for myself. Turns out this methyl bromide, yes, it is toxic, but the pallets that have been treated with that should be safe to use after the fact from what I can tell. And also the EUR pallets are branded with HT, which stands for heat treated, which is even better and they are perfectly safe to use. And if you wonder why they're doing it, they have to do it to prevent all sorts of animals traveling the world in the pallets. So I guess after doing my research, I feel a lot better. It's just, I don't, I don't like pallets, that's it. When my pallet was torn to pieces and all the nails were removed, it was time to turn the free pallet wood into a seat. And to be able to do that, I had to glue them into thicker pieces of wood. I realized I could get away with using the parts of the pallets without the nail holes. And that just leaves us with a nice finished material. After a couple of passes on the planar thicknesser, I had some nice pieces of pine and some very light pieces of spruce. I'm not into pallet wood, but milling always is a pain. You have to be aware of all the knots and shitty grain, but I shouldn't complain. It's just my thicknesser needs a new blade. You should sharpen it, you say, yeah, well, not today. I glued them together to create two panels. And after that had been in glue, I glued the two panels together to create a thicker panel. There are some other downsides to pallets. The moisture, for one. After measuring the pieces, I realized the top parts were quite good at around 13 to 14% whilst the parts that had been to the ground were a bit higher at around 17% moisture content. And for fine woodworking, I usually aim for around 6 to 9%. The nail holes, that's another issue, and all the work that goes into getting some usable wood out of it. So it might be free, but very labor intensive to use pallets. After having a finished panel though, it looked okay, but I had a plan to transform the pallet wood to make it look even better. But first I had to turn the square into a circle. Most routers come with a circle cutting jig and whilst that works good, I have a router attachment from a colleague of mine here on YouTube, USSA Design, that I used for my previous tool and it worked really well. So I used that to get the circle. It creates a perfect circle and for the last part I use a flush trim bit on my router table. Then I wanted to chamfer the edges to match, but before I did that I got a notification that my first print was done. For this print I used the gyroid infill and it took way too long, so for the next one I'll be using, uh, what's it called? Adaptive Cubic, but the print's still gonna be around 10 hours and around 500 grams of filament. I got it down a bit by using the adaptive cubic, so I hope the filament will last, but I'm not sure. In that case, I will have to figure it out somehow. Uh, so now uh, we have a 10 hour print in front of me, uh, which is better than the 19 hours I would get with the gyroid. And this still feels extremely solid. So I just hope it'll be strong enough when I put the dowels in and you put some pressure on it, but we'll see. We'll see if I can prove that guy wrong in the end. And when the next part was started on the A1, I could continue my work on the seat. So for the chamfer, I had a couple of options. For the last stool project, I made a chamfer jig, which worked really good. 
but I would have to make a new jig for this project. And instead of doing that, I decided to place the pallet wood on the small CNC from Saint Smart and have that do the work. It frees up my time to do other stuff in between. There was some work before I could start the CNC. I had to do some work on the computer. I had my 3D design from Fusion 360 and in that same software there's a function to create the G-code for the CNC, basically telling the machine what to do. This would require a course in itself, but basically I chose what type of bit I'll be using, where the milling should start and what type of operations I wanted the CNC to do. And in this case, I wanted to create a hole in the middle of the seat for my 3D print to go into. And then I also wanted it to create the chamfer. One of the good things with the CNC is that you can do other work whilst the CNC is working. One of the bad things is that you still need to pay attention and make sure it doesn't go all ape shit on your wood. Especially when it's a first carve like this. There are always things that can go wrong. I had some work to do with dowels, so I started cutting the dowels to length. And after having three of them, I could place them into the 3D print. It's a snug fit, and that's also the idea here. Being able to just take it apart. After placing the three legs into the print, I could also place it on the desk and make a mark along the bottom with something flat to create a cut line. I could have used the angle of the cat drawing, but it, this is a good and easy way of leveling furniture. I also picked up the last print from the 3D printer and luckily one spool was more than enough to print both my parts. And the fit with the other print was snug. The CNC was doing a good job and before I knew it I had a pretty nice surface. I did leave just a tad of surface on the chamfer for me to sand down the edges created by the CNC. There are functions to go over and create a really smooth surface, but it would take too long, so I decided to sand instead. So I had this idea to try to make the pallet wood look really good, and the idea was to use a pre-color from Rubio Monocoat that kind of gives the wood a black stain. But after seeing the black 3D printed parts and the contrasting bright color from the wood, I decided to keep that look and rather give the wood a coat of Rubio Monocoat cotton white. That kind of keeps the white tone of the wood and also stops the wood from going yellow. And after that was done, I had the pieces assembled. The 3D print has holes in it to add screws into the seat. And this is my pallet wood 3D printed piece. Okay, so here it is. It surely looks good, but uh, I'm not sure it's gonna hold up. But I hope so, so that I can go back and prove that guy wrong. Let's go, let's try it out. Absolute first time sitting down on this thing. Uh, it wobbles. Is that because... You know, there is some... Wobble to it. There are some design tweaks I want to make to it, but... I think it looks kind of good. It doesn't really feel like a perfectly solid seat, so it kind of... I kind of roll around when I'm sitting down. But surely, it's a stool that's working. I can go up and down. Now I'm gonna go take a picture of this, post it, and then I'll send him a link to it and say, look what I did. Now, uh, why did he look so frustrated? Well, he finished his project and was really pleased with the result. So he posted a snarky comment to the comment this all started with. He said, here you go. I made a piece of furniture with a 3D printer and some pallet wood. I guess you were wrong. <laughs> and he posted a link with a picture of it. He was surely happy for about 20 minutes until he saw a reply. Pallet wood for sure isn't supposed to be used for furniture. Neither is 3D printing. Let me know when it breaks. I'm not sure why the commenter had a British accent but I guess he needs to make another video now.